What is up guys, today we are starting a brand new series for absolute beginners in Roblox Studio. By the end of the series, you will have made your own game from scratch. You don't need any experience to do this series. This is a great starting point for anyone interested in making their own Roblox games. So let's start with what is Roblox Studio. Roblox Studio is a free tool used to create games and experiences for the Roblox platform. It's like a digital playground where you can build worlds, design characters, and make things happen with code. Roblox Studio gives you a 3D environment where you can create things like maps, buildings, or anything you can imagine using simple building blocks, much like virtual Legos. You can drag and drop parts, shapes, and objects to design your world. You can use scripting to make your creations interactive. Roblox Studio uses a coding language called Lua. This lets you add features like moving parts, buttons, or even creating enemies or power-ups in your games. You can make your world come to life by telling it how to react when players do things like jump, collect items, or interact with other players. Once you've made your game, you can easily publish it on the Roblox platform for others to play. Anyone who has Roblox can search for and play your game, which can be played on phones, tablets, PCs, and even consoles. There's many different types of games you can create, from obstacle courses called obbies, to role-playing games, racing games, or even complex simulations. The possibilities are endless, and the Roblox community loves to try new games, so you can always find an audience for what you make. Roblox Studio is designed to be easy to use. There are menus and buttons for most tasks like building, designing, and coding, so you don't have to learn everything all at once. In short, Roblox Studio is a beginner-friendly tool for making 3D games where you build with blocks, write simple code, and share your creations with millions of people. So with that being said, let's download and install Roblox Studio. So to download and install Roblox Studio, just go to your web browser and search for Roblox Studio Download. And we want the create.roblox.com. Just click on that. And then you should see Get Roblox Studio. Just click Download. I'm on a Mac, so my installation is going to look a little different than yours if you're on Windows, but that's fine. You just open it up and run it. I'm going to click Open. Once it installs or finishes installing, you should be prompted to log in. So if you don't have a Roblox account, you can just click sign up right here and it will take you to a page where you can create an account. I'm not going to do that. I've already got a Roblox account and I figure a bunch of y'all <clears throat> already have account, an account as well. So just you can just use your uh, the same account that you play games on for Roblox Studio as a Roblox Studio account. The main thing to keep in mind is that you have to have a Roblox account to be able to use Roblox Studio. So when it opens up, you will not see all of this stuff. This is just projects that I've worked on over time. What you want to do is you want to click the new button on the top left corner of your screen. And then you can choose from many different options uh, and several that will give you a huge head start on making whatever game it is you want to make. But for now, we're going to keep it simple and we're just going to use the base plate. So just click on base plate to open up a new world. We're going to go over some of the UI inside of Roblox Studio. You got your top bar. This is where you can click file, save to file, save to Roblox, uh, and several other different options. You've also got several different tabs for home, model, avatar, test, view, plugins. Right now, just leave it on home. We've also got our explorer window over here. This is where everything inside of our game lives. For example, parts, models, and scripts. But this can be pretty confusing when you first look at it. So what I want you to focus on first is the workspace. This is where everything in your game world exists. You can see we've got our spawn location. If we click that, you can see this blue outline around it. We can add in new objects. We could add in a new part, for example. There it is. It's now in our game world. I'm going to delete it for now. 
If you insert something into the workspace, it will put it into your game world. Below the explore window, you've got your properties window. Now your properties window shows all the detailed settings for any selected object, like size, color, transparency, etc. This is where you will go to modify any game object that you have in your game. For example, if I click the spawn location, we could change the brick color. We could make it red. We could make it transparent and much, much more. Down here, we have our output window. It is usually hidden by default, so you may not see this. In order to see it, you need to click at, in the top bar, the view tab and click output. And then you should see it below. This is something we always want to be able to see because later when we start scripting, this is where errors will display and this is how we will troubleshoot and debug our code. Uh, but don't worry about that right now. We're just looking at the UI and getting comfortable with Roblox Studio. On the left, you've got the toolbox. It's a place where you can get free models and assets from the Roblox library, but we will cover that more in depth in a later video. With the Home tab selected, you should see a big play button. If you press play, you can test out your game. You can see by default that we are spawned into a world and we can already run around with our character, our Roblox avatar. And yeah, we're running around in our game world. So that's already a huge step in making a game. That's, that's just an example of how easy Roblox is compared to other game engines. If we press stop, it stops playing and it goes back to how it was before. Now dealing with Roblox Studio, you wanna get comfortable with manipulating the camera. So if you right click and drag, it will turn and rotate the camera. If you want to move the camera, you just use the WASD keys and you can hold down the right click button and then you can turn it and it's just like playing a game, honestly. You can navigate the world by just moving around like you would if you were playing a first person shooter. You can zoom in and out with the scroll wheel. You can select objects in the works in the, in the game world by just clicking on them. So if I wanted to select this spawn location, I would just click it. We can see it's highlighted in our Explorer window. That lets us know that it's definitely selected. Also, if you select something, if you're having a hard time finding something, you can just select it here and then press F and it will zoom in on that object. That is very handy and something you definitely want to remember as that will make your life a whole lot easier down the road. Let's go over how to save. So let's say you made a change and you're happy with it. If you wanted to save it locally on your computer, you would just click file to save or file to save or save to file or, and save to file as. We're not going to do that though. We're just going to save to Roblox. And we're going to call this beginner tutorial. This really doesn't matter right now because we're nowhere close to publishing the game and getting other people to play it, but we are just going to make it uh, work for computers at the moment. We can always come back in and change this whenever. Um, it's up to you if you want to enable Team Create. Team Create lets you work with other people and collaborate. We're going to just turn that off. Data sharing. I like to leave this on because that it helps uh, Roblox make better AI for scripting. So once you're happy with your basic info, you can just click save. And there we go, we've saved our place. Now, if something were to happen, if, the, if our computer were to crash, uh, we close out of it, it is saved to our Roblox account. So if we go, if we open Roblox Studio back up, and go to my games, we should see it listed. It should be the very top left because it's the most recent one that we've opened. You could also go to the recent tab and you should see it. Just click it, open it back up. So unless you select one of those templates for your game, this is how your game is going to look every time you create something new. You've got your default base plate. If we were to delete our base plate, there you go, that's the ground, it's gone. If you look, this is our default sky. There is a sun 
and there is a moon, we can easily manipulate the time of day through code, which is something we will get to in a later video. Uh, but we could also go to lighting. This is where our, oops. This is where our sky is, or this is where our sky lives. If we were to delete the sky, it looks like there's still, it honestly looks better if you ask me. If you delete something on accident, you can undo it by just pressing Control Z, just like in any other software application. Control Z to undo, or Command Z on a Mac. There we go, I just undid everything and now we're back to how it was. We will cover these tabs at the in the top. We will cover those more in depth in future videos, but for now, we have gone over all the basic UI elements in Roblox Studio. And you should be getting comfortable with uh, Roblox Studio. It's going to take a little bit of time, especially the camera manipulation. Uh, but just main thing to remember is just hold down right click and use WASD to move around the scene. And you can just select stuff and press F and it'll zoom in on it. It'll find it. Think F to find. So yeah, we have learned the basics of the user interface and we have created our first project. We have saved it. And in the next video, we'll start building our first game elements by learning how to create and manipulate parts. So I'll see you over there and thank you for watching.